Okay, last question from Jonathan Miller. Yes, sir. May I help you? Mr. Mayor, Mr. President, at the risk of being shot down, the numbers of people who have been killed on the streets of the Philippines since you came to power six weeks ago have risen to around a thousand. Now, I, you, I know you have been contemptuous of your critics, but they are accusing you of unleashing a national death squad. Where is this going to end? Because some Very are saying good. that the, the social fabric of the Philippines is at risk here. Good. That's a very good question. Because at the other past, in the distant past, no police was ever willing to really work and risk her life, his life. You know, it was a practice before. That's why I said I take full responsibility. You know why? Because they are now encouraged and even brave enough to have a shoot up. The standard practice in the system of government is that when you accuse him, they would always file a counter charge and say there was due process or that they were uh, unarmed and anything, any answer that could give a leverage. And ordinarily, and you can check this out in the courts, they have to use that leverage against the poor policemen. Now, remember in this country, no lawyer is provided for the policemen and the other uh, men and the security officers when they, when, we, when they get into trouble with the law. They are left at the mercy on their own. That was the policy before and in the previous ones. They are left behind. So when I was mayor, I told them, go ahead, do your duty. But if you feel that you're in carrying out your duty, you will get killed. My God, shoot him first. And they were protected here, and there were cases filed, and I provided the lawyer. And for the time that they are suspended, that is why they are afraid. They face charges in court, then at the same time, when they are accused, they lose the job because they are suspended. And for the time that they are suspended, and the hearing of cases can take you to eternity, as slow as it can ever be. The family is not without food. But with respect, sir, you as a lawyer know yes. better than any of us how important this principle of innocent until proved well, guilty is. Look, Padilla said two years ago, there are three million addicts in this country. That was the last figure. Nobody cared to find out. Now it's my time. So three years, uh, two, two years ago, between two years ago and now, how many do you think were hooked into drugs? Let us give it incremental increase of about, just be liberal about 7,000, 700,000. So 3,700,000. And they confirm 600,000 now was surrendered and took the test for drug addiction. How do you call it? Just a problem? Is just a police problem? Or is it really a crisis for this country? It's not even epidemic, my friend. It is pandemic. So what am I supposed to do as a president? Empower the military and the police for after all they are there to protect the integrity and preserve the people of the Philippines. At the risk of gun law, sir. <laughs> it can happen. It, it, ha it happens in America. They're shooting the blacks there. It shows on TV. It shows on TV. What's the difference between America and the Philippines? Nothing. So what is surprising here is surprising to us. We see policemen, they're shooting a black guy there. How many times had it happened in the past? That's why you have the, demonst the violent demonstration. So, would it surprise you and me? Almost the same. One case only, three cases here. So what? It involves the same principle. Say for every one black there dead, you have about five here. And so, does it make uh, this world more livable because there is less killing? The, when you shoot <laughs> a black there dead, what is that? Is that not appalling? 
when you bomb Syria and Iraq and you kill communities and you kill children and old people and hospital, what is it? And why is it that United States is not doing anything? I do not read anybody in that stupid body complaining about the stench there of that. Look at the iconic boy uh, that was uh, taken out from the rubble. And he was made to sit in the ambulance. And we saw it. So what's the difference? Life of a criminal or maybe he was really rubbed out. We cannot discount it. But what do you think what the Americans did to the black people there? Is that not rubbing out also? I say, well, it was just uh, one community there, one state of America. <laughs> Well, but you have there about 10. So what's the difference? Are we here for the counting or the basic principles of human rights? Almost the same. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sir, la last question from Doris, though. <laughs> sir, yung balik tayo kay Delima, yung sa sinabi niya, um, meron na po ba kayong mga nakalinyan o meron na kayong kinakausap na mga to strengthen your case against her? Na mga preso o warden who would testify against Dilima? And are you or are your agencies making efforts to track down the driver and to get him as a no, witness? No, I will not do that. She knows where the where lover is, so leave her at that. What we have is the intercept. But the intercepts uh, cannot be used in evidence. That's illegal. Meaning to say, you can do the intercept, but it cannot be allowed in evidence in court. But, nobody, but in this, uh, the recto law here says that you cannot even try it. But that was the time when we were using landlines. It's now free. It's a free enterprise now in the advent of digital uh, aids. You can siphon any of the conversation. China is doing it. America is doing it. Great Britain is doing it. Everybody is doing it with the power to listen. They have the machines. There's a law. You cannot prevent them. But then, you cannot use it in court. Because uh, it, it would not be acceptable. So if I just listen and say to you, and say, I cannot reveal it. You must remember that I signed an executive order without waiting for Congress, the right to information. And in that executive order, I allowed everybody to even to look at the diapers in Malacanian. You have now the access to all documents you need to know if there is corruption or not. And that is my desire to do away with corruption. Now, uh, can I now go to court and file a case? No. That is not my job. My job is in the higher the president shall do everything in his power to protect public interest. As president, I got this information being a privilege as a president, but I am not required to prove it in court that is somebody else's business. Okay, so that, that's one. The second is, uh, I have every right not to tell you because you were the one, the major, bugging me several times. We met in Cotabato, everywhere you were. So who is the next mayor, senator that you will reveal connected with drugs? I said, there is one. And I told you, wait, because I have to do something about this. First, first of all, you have to ask the permission from the country who provided it to just mention it without naming. But that country is really also mad at dilemma. Because she's involved in drugs. Every country is, every country is mad. Even China, there's, uh, they even execute people. Indonesia, Malaysia, they hang them. Philippines have been asking for the restoration of the death penalty. So, if I were a soldier, I'll give you a classic case. I am a soldier. I'm assigned at 
tulog basilan fighting di Abu Sayyaf. I work very hard for this country. Then I said my salary is given to my wife. She sets up the house, send the school school children. While I am fighting to preserve democracy in this country, he knows now suddenly that his daughter got raped. That his daughter got killed because of the drug addict. Tell me now because this is really what happened. If I were the lawyer, if I were the soldier, if I go back to see the child rape, my, 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 my daughter rape dead, stiff dead, inside the coffin. And he said that he was raped by those people. What do you think I will do? I will ask the president permission. Mr. President, I have to kill these people. So why is it widespread? You know, when generals are involved already, when everybody, almost all of the policemen and every in region four, there are four, four hundred all in all, one hundred in the same town. <coughs> Six hundred, one hundred only in one town. How do you cope up? Policemen into drugs. And so that is why you see many policemen are also killed in police operations. Because he does not surround himself and is a drug lord. So, policemen are there. The Middle East guys, three million of our fellow human beings, the Filipinos. One father is working in Qatar, the other is working in Saudi Arabia. They work their ass to death to send money. Only to discover during one of the rare visits that they are allowed to realize that the sun is already hooked in Shabu and is longer places. Does the lives of 10 criminals really matter to me? If I am the one facing the grief, would 100 lives of this idiot would mean anything to me? I was a prosecutor once, but if somebody raped my daughter because he was hooked into drugs and killed my daughter, my God, I will kill you. Let it be known to everybody. You despoil the body of my child. Then you expect me just to kill three because there are 100. Okay, I'll just kill three. Because that would be a fair exchange of lives here. And can you measure an anger? If I were a policeman, you killed my son. If I were a soldier, you killed my, my wife and family. You'd wipe them out in could I measure that anger by just about maybe 200 lives? Even the Americans thought that it's good. Charles Brunson, he was, was it Death Wish? Or what was the movie about? He was, a, he was a cop, he was a vigilante, just like Clint Eastwood. They, they reflect, actually, they are the mirrors of life. They mirror the lives of everybody. Do what? No. Uh, in the sense that uh, uh, I do not believe the crusading justice there. It's far different. The, the, man, he has his own duty as old, old to protect. Mine is a larger. I have to protect a country. He? He simply is appalled and, and he has pity to the fellow Americans who die needlessly in the hands of them. They are law-abiding citizens. They do not carry arms because they obey the law. And yet they are waylaid, they are killed for nothing. They are being, there's a stick up and, and you know, see, 
There, there, there's, a, uh, there's a camera there, there's a lady going out of the apartment, and she ends up dead. So, on the average, that policeman has that paradigm of what's happening to this fucking thing. Then, the, the, the serial rapists are sent to jail. After two years, they are allowed to go out. Then they go out, they look for uh, houses with open windows. Nobody's there except uh, the daughters or the children. He goes into the room, carries the, the, the child, brings her to the nearby woods, and. No, 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 no. What is true there is true here. The mirror of life is portrayed before us. That's what I'm saying. If it's a sense of my character, no. It is not an original trait. I have my faith to follow. I've been telling everybody, you cannot build a nation over the bones of your citizens. But with the crisis of 3 million plus the 500 that are now addicted, what kind of mirror do you want to portray your anguish and anger? Let us be clear on that. But you may think, so what are you? My friend, I am a human being. I know how to get angry. I should know how I, I would get soft. I know how to pity. And I know how to have a rage in me. How do I react? It all depends. If it's my daughter, I'll kill you. If just an ordinary citizen, I'm privileged because what? Because my children and I, we are protected by the Presidential Security Command. Even my children will be protected. But I wish I could go around just like other times when I was mayor. Everybody here, I drive a taxi. And I wait for the, uh, the hold upper to really do the hold up to me. Why? Because uh, if I kill him, then there's one less kidnapper or hold upper in the city. I used to go around because I, I was really hunting for them. But I do not go out just because of killing people. <laughs> About lives, my God. Syria. Six years hence, suffered bombings and everything, and yet you hear this UN expert that Duterte is not doing enough. No, ask, I'll ask you, when is enough enough for a problem with three million addicts and in our control and our custody, 600,000? What am I supposed to do? Do I have the money? You know, the, the, these guys, they ask, like the United Nations, why are there no, what, what are you doing this? You know, the Philippines does not have that money, just like the United States and the EU. I came midstream. Remember that mid-year. The money was already gone. I am faced with this gargantum problem of dealing with this. But the program is there. You cannot get out of that budget. It's yearly. So where do I get the money from this budget? They are all program. If you get some money out, then you, you rob Peter by paying Paul. You deprive this one department with their money. So because there is a need for that uh, immediately. So you rob uh, whatever is program for the people. You rob Peter to pay Paul. For, to, for you to build even in matter of space i have ordered the military to provide the space because there is really no space if you just put it at one hundred thousand per region there are four God. there are 30 14 regions here including the arm place it at one thousand in one region one hundred thousand where do i get the money to buy the beds blankets pillows water building Doctors, medicines, and nurses. It's not that easy. And you worry about the lives of 600, 500. 
You must remember that those who are already in Shabu for almost one year, they are dead. They are the living, walking dead. They are of no use to society anymore. And yet we have to sequester them. We have to feed them because they're human beings. And we need money. And where do we get the money? We collect taxes to support government. The taxes that we collected were programmed already for the previous year to run this government. I entered the presidency halfway. So the taxes are programmed here. I cannot collect taxes and spend it. This is a democracy. Judiciary, legislative, presidency. Call co-equal. I have to get the authority from Congress. There is no such thing as a supplemental budget in the national. No such thing as... as a, then you have to wait. Maybe you borrow. But then again, if you borrow, you need Congress. That's how it is complicated in a democracy. It's not because you are the president, you can always immediately stop it. How about the persons who have an axe to grind? 600, five, 600. How many parents and persons and sisters and brothers are hell mad at them? Then you presume that what, what's the order of the police because you want to catch them all. And you think it's only the police who are interested. Of course the police are interested, is interested to apprehend you. And maybe they would really enjoy you if you put up a good fight. Because the police there will not go along. When they go there around to ask, uh, to arrest these people, they are already positioned. So when this guy, a poor guy, with this idiotic mind would pull out a gun, he's dead. And that is why I said, why is it that in every apprehension, uh, uh, no, no police, God, I said we are losing. I just lost one police today. Uh, maybe another statistic, uh, by tomorrow I would be able to gauge. With the the CAFGO, the paramilitary units got killed in confrontation with drugs. It is flooding the country. With the help of the PNP guys, the generals, it has spread to every nook and corner of my country. As a matter of fact, under other countries with this kind of pandemic, they would have declared martial law. That's why Thaksin, the premier of Thailand, in one day he killed 3,000, piled them up in the truck alive, until they all, they all suffocated. The ones on the middle died because of suffocation, because they were placed there and were told to lie down so that they would not be able to jump out. But I see no outrage. Well, three, four days, maybe BBC, CNN, but after that, all is forgotten. Here, there was this child in my city, I was still mayor. There was a reunion party in the family. The elder sister was carrying the newborn, the newly born child. Here comes the brother without them knowing what was happening to this. He said, oh, let me carry my new niece. In the merrymaking, he disappeared. Then there was a frantic shirt. 100 away was a river bank was in Mandu. The river bank, they found the child, 18 months old, with her abdominal cavity wide open. So death of this child, 200 criminals, or at least those who fought against the police. Is there any rhyme or reason to say, how about the lives keep on piling? <laughs> how about the child? <laughs> you know, I am forced to not really, I'm just saying that you forget the law. Forget the United Nations. Forget your outrage. It is misplaced. Now I tell you now, by what right? do you have in this universe to cook shabu 
feed it to my children and destroy their lives forever. I spent money, time. Here in the Philippines, the police is eternally tied to the five six. It is 20% per week. That is the tragedy of it all. So, I borrow money. Every enrollment time, I go to the GSIS. And it does not come because of the efficiency of this. I am also warning everybody. And I said, all those appointed, including the heads of financial institutions, consider yourself resigned. Now, you go to this GIS, GIS, you apply for a salary loan during enrollment time. It's either no money or it is not acted upon for three months. Long after enrollment or classes had already started. You know that some of you are, uh, we are uh, not the sons and daughters of uh, uh, well-connected and had money. In it. My mother was a teacher. She used to borrow money. The application, sometimes let alone, not after or comes late. So we are forced to go to this uh, Indian uh, money lenders at you see those late. Remember in this country, no lawyer is provided for the policemen and the other uh, men and the security officers when they, when, we, when they get into trouble with the law. They are left at the mercy on their own. That was the policy before and in the previous ones. They are left behind. So when I was mayor, I told them, go ahead, do your duty. But if you feel that you're in carrying out your duty, you will get killed. My God, shoot him first. And they were protected here. And there were cases filed. And I provided the lawyer. And for the time that they are suspended, that is why they are afraid. It distant past. No police was ever willing to really work and risk her life, his life. You know, it was a practice before. That's why I said I take full responsibility. You know why? Because they are now encouraged and even brave enough to have a shootout. The standard practice in the system of government is that when you accuse him, they would always file a counter charge and say there was due process or that they were uh, unhar unarmed and anything. Any answer that could give a leverage. And ordinarily, and you can check this out in the courts, they have to use that leverage against the poor policemen. Now, so, three years, uh, two, two years ago, between two years ago and now, how many do you think were hooked into drugs? Let us give it incremental increase of about, just be liberal about 7,000, 700,000. So, 3 million 700,000. And the confirmed 600, Thousand now was surrendered and took the test for drug addiction. How do you call it? Just a problem? Is just a police problem? Or is it really a crisis for this country? It's not even epidemic, my friend. It is pan. Okay, last question from Jonathan Miller. Yes, sir. May I help you? Mr. Mayor, Mr. President, at the risk of being shot down, the numbers of people who have been killed on the streets of the Philippines since you came to power six weeks ago have risen to around a thousand. Now, I, you, I know you have been contemptuous of your critics, but they are accusing you of unleashing a national death squad. Where is this going to end? Because some are saying that the, the social fabric of the Philippines is at risk here. Good. That's a very good question. Because at the other uh, past, and they, they face charges in court, then at the same time, when they are accused, they lose the job because they are suspended. And for the time that they are suspended, 
and the hearing of cases can take you to eternity as slow as it can ever be. The family is not without food. But with respect, sir, you as a lawyer know yes. better than any of us how important this principle of innocent until proved well, guilty is. Look, Padilla said two years ago, there are three million addicts in this country. That was the last figure. Nobody cared to find out. Now it's my time. 